first off, and one of the first things you notice when you come to the website of the band is that this has been a dream 25 years in the making. Um, first, I'm curious what finally tipped it over the edge that you could put this out into the world now? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, uh, old age, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, it's, 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 it, it, you know, a after many, many years of working in entertainment, um, if you don't do it, nothing's going to happen. Mm. And so, um, yeah, I went through uh, a, a big writing phase and, and uh, the guys uh, that surrounded themselves that I was able to surround myself with were just, just awesome great giving musicians you know they they knew my story they they knew that you know i've been you know production and managing and audio engineering for you know anybody and everybody for you know for 25 years and so you know they they really got behind it and, mm -hmm. and they believed in the songs and believed in the project and mm -hmm. uh, you know we we were able to come out with something that we're very proud of yeah and I don't know it's it's kind of a term I've, I've gotten used to it, but maybe not everyone has about what it means to be a, a giving musician. Um, you know, and I'm wondering how you you define that in terms of of your band. Sure. Well, I, when we started out the band, uh, our guitar player was uh, a man by the name of Teddy Lee Hooker, who uh, was loosely related to Johnny Lee Hooker. And um, he really shepherded me into the blues and uh, a, a giving musician. It didn't matter what I played, whatever I played, he was like, OK, you're going to play that. Check this out. I'm going to play this. And does it. And in now it becomes greater than the sum of its parts. It's like all of a sudden, you know, he, he, he you know, he would just always be that way. Uh, while sort of shepherding me into the blues was, you know, you got it, you, you know what you're doing. You just have to have faith in yourself and, uh, you know, keep doing what you're doing. And, um, uh, you know, so, you know, a, a giving musician is not only, um, very cognizant of, of the song and the other parts, but is always trying to make it better without necessarily standing out, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Um, and so, sometimes, not to stereotype, that could be rare to find among lead guitarists. Uh, <laughs> That's true. That's true. But uh, Teddy was one of those guys. And um, uh, we lost Teddy during COVID. Mm. So, um, and th that was a, a pretty sad time. Mm. And um, now we've been blessed with a, a guy named Chalo Ortiz on guitar. And uh, uh, Chalo's the same way, you know. He just he just really is when when it when it's his turn to hit the gas pedal, he hits the gas pedal. But other than that, he's a pocket player. Yeah, just, you know, and just you know loves when when everything is just grooving and right. Yeah, yeah, and um, the you know the other thing that, that kind of came out of that or uh, something you just said was just the whole idea of uh, it kind of falls into the. the the term active listening, you know, where you're talking about, you know, Teddy saying, all right, you're playing this, so I'm going to play that. And um, I think that's a thing where um, when you get to a certain level of musicianship, that's what separates a lot of really great players from just ordinary players. Like there's guys that can play a part here. Here's your part and they can play it. But the guys that can react in real time to what the vocalist is doing the keyboardist is doing and stuff like that that's that to me is a is a a whole other level um and is it is that just something people learn or do you think i don't know is is are people more naturally that way among musicians certain musicians i i think musicians in general tend to gravitate that way whether whether they exercise that muscle I mean, you know, if you, if you talked to me 25, 30 years ago, I, I just performed a song mm -hmm. you know? 
and and I performed it to the best of my ability, pretty pat, pretty straight ahead, uh, as it was rehearsed. Yeah. And and now, um, you know, with with Cassius King and the Downtown Rulers, it's um, it's a little bit more of a tight wire act. Mm. You know, it's it's a little bit more of of really being in the pocket and listening and and listening to where the dynamics are going, the musicians are going, you know, uh, that, you know, that's that's truly where where the magic happens, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I and something unexpected comes out of it. You, you know, you know. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the Grateful Dead because they never played the same song the same way twice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's something to be said for that to, you know, to, uh, um, you know, to harness the energy of the band and the crowd and the situation and to try and, and, and play that is, is, is what's really exciting. It's just, you know, there's, I, 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 I can't even put it into words. Yeah. And no, I, that, that totally makes sense. And, you know, it's at that point, it becomes so much more, I think, interesting for the musicians as well as, as well as the audience. Yeah. Um, and so now you tend to, you do piano, you do keyboard. I think you also do Hammond B3 organ as mm -hmm. well. Um, what determines which of those you reach for when you're creating a tune? Um, you know, uh, the, the, you know, uh, a Hammond over a piano is kind of a, a nice, a nice touch mm -hmm. because, um, it, 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 it's, it's kind of what I gravitated towards because, you know, I mean, you, you listen to, uh, you know, all old great blues bands, you know, there's a piano player and there's an organ player in many cases. Mm -hmm. And, and to be able to, to use the, uh you know uh, the, the the instruments in that way to where they don't necessarily have to be comping all at the same time mm -hmm. but the piano brings it down and it brings a different vibe to it and then you know you can really dig in with the hammond and you know uh you know scream or or lay back as well and so you know it 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 really gives a a, a nice juxtaposition to the energy in the songs is what i found okay okay so yeah you you really try and favor a combination i do i do try and favor a combination i mean you know some songs i'll just play hammond some songs i'll just play piano um but you know for the most part i i, I like the combination yeah you know, it works mm -hmm. <clears throat> is is there one that you use more often when you are writing a song uh the piano yeah so i mean you know i basically you know i i was a voice major in college okay. i actually i actually sang opera <laughs> wow and, All right. yeah yeah so i was singing opera during the day and playing in bands at night and uh uh wild and woolly music time but obviously that's when i learned you know piano and theory and and all that so yeah if, if i'm writing I, I gravitate towards the piano mm-hmm and uh, well uh, all right well now that makes me wonder so obviously blues very much not operatic kind of singing you'd be surprised um, <laughs> well that's what i'm wondering is what did that experience you know in in opera singing how does that inform what you do as a blues singer because that that was an unexpected bit of information Right. Um, you know, uh, I thought it was important to get uh, uh, classically trained. Uh, you know, my, my goal was never uh, classical music, but to have that background and to go back that far, you know, in in not, not only theory, but but music history, uh, you know, I mean, you know, and moving forward, I, I mean, it's you know there's a lot of blues in classical music i mean the pentatonic scale was you know is is not only worldwide and known in in many cultures but that was actually the first scale that was created by gregorian monks oh wow okay you know so so to sort of see everything from from you know a, a macro view in that way uh i i has has really helped me as a musician for sure hmm. interesting you know? 
and then but the other fascinating aspect is you know you read anything about any of the 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 big names in the history of blues music not only did they not have formal training a lot of them couldn't even read music um and you know i'm wondering you know how do you how do you look at it how do you uh, um would you talk to people about it you know they say you know cuz there's some purists who say oh no it's all about you know, feel and and you've got to get out of your head with all that kind of stuff. And and you're coming at it from a, a, what I would argue is a very intellectual background to music. Well, I'll, let's just say I wasn't the best student. So uh, <laughs> I absorbed a lot uh, during those years, both, you know, in in playing in bars and running bands and learning, um, you know, as much as I could about, you know, uh, uh, singing and piano and theory and history of music. Um, you know, I, I I would say that the blues purists in a lot of ways are right. You know, you can, it, it is a very emotionally driven genre. Yeah. And, and you can't fake it. You know, I mean, you know, uh, you know, blues fans know a faker a mile away, you know, mm -hmm. and so, you know, you, you just get up there and give it all you got and just leave everything on the stage every time. Yeah. You know, that's, that's, you know, uh, uh, playing is therapy for me, you know, mm -hmm. it, it really is it, to, to get in front of a crowd and exchange that energy and to really just, just give it everything you got is, um, it is, uh, it, it really is therapy and, and, uh, I, you know, I, I lived without it for a long time, just wood shedding by myself and, and, and whatever else and it's like you know I, I i finally came to the realization that it's like i don't care what happens i just got to do it hmm. you know and it's like you know i never you know again you know working in the industry making the show for everybody else you yeah. know night, after night or festival after festival you know that's what i do and and it's like you know it it, it wasn't that i was you know envious of the people on stage because i was really happy for them and really proud to be a part of making their show the best it could be mm -hmm. but damn it i just wanted to jump <laughs> on stage. right right and i mean i would argue also that you know a lot of those people behind the scenes are you know the best the best people that are supporting are people that have at least attempted the music themselves and, you know, maybe have a better appreciation as a result for what goes into it and, and maybe have a little bit more of an attuned ear for all the different subtleties, um, you know, and, and like a front of house sound guy is worth his weight in gold. Cause you know, if he's not, if he's not doing his job, then it doesn't matter how good the guys on stage are. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I, I, you know, I say I'm an audio engineer, but I use the term loosely. Yes, I've ran front of house many, many, many times. But there are guys that, that it's just what they do sonically to to a room or or um, an area, you know, if it's an outdoor festival and how they play that. They play it better than, you know, uh, you know, any musician. It's it, mm -hmm. You're right. They are worth their weight in gold. At the same time, they're masters at their craft. Yeah. And, and you know, so yeah, I you know, again, I'm either side stage or front of house, you know, all the time. And and to watch and work with these guys, you know, to again to make the show the best it can be, uh, you know, is it is a pleasure. Yeah. And then to flip that, I mean, because. Like I've said, like I'm an awful drummer, but I always contend that attempting to play and learning how to play made me a better listener and made me appreciate other drummers, made me appreciate bass players a lot more, oh, um, yeah. you know, being able to hear the difference and such as that. What I'm wondering, flipping this scenario, how does what you have done as an audio engineer, et cetera, um, how has that helped you? How has your work off stage helped what you do on stage? 
Uh, I think, it, you know, uh, being in the various chairs and, and, and positions around the stage um, has, has helped me to tune my ear to, oh, this isn't quite right, or, you know, hey, um, you know, maybe we should amp that, you know, mic that amp this way or whatever else, depending on the, the room situation. So uh, not really telling the engineers what to do, but suggesting, hey, I'm hearing something uh, uh, that uh, you might want to take a listen to, too. You know, mm -hmm. I would refer to them and they're like, ah, oh, we're good. It's like, all right, we're good. Let's go. Yeah. And then to, to, to change direction a little bit. So Cassius King is is, is a pseudonym. It's it's a, a, a stage name. Yes. And I'm curious, is that, you know, are you a different person on stage than you are off stage? Is, you know, Cassius King, the uh, you, the performer, are you different than you sitting behind the console? Um, I'm definitely a little bit more vocal. Uh, <laughs> And uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say animated from from a from a, a performance standpoint, but rather than more of a, 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 a more of being in the moment with uh, with the other players and, and 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 playing. So from from that standpoint, yeah, it, you're in a different headspace. Yeah, you, know, you really are when 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 you're performing and. Uh, and uh, yeah, by the way, uh, uh, Teddy Lee Hooker gave me my blues name of Cassius King. OK, uh, uh, he said I, I was always working. I was always working. And so I was always chasing the dollar. So yeah. <laughs> I like it. That's cool. That's cool. And then you describe, uh, um, at least from what I've seen as print, Cassius King and the downtown rulers are, are described as contemporary blues. How does that differ from traditional blues, say? Well, you know, um, there's the blues purists, and and you know they want they want a three piece band and uh, a killer guitar player. Um, you know, uh, uh, I, I think being a keyboard player, songwriter, singer is definitely a little bit. Uh, a, a different take on the blues. There's not a lot of those, hmm. you know. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, arguably, you know, uh, one of my heroes, John Cleary. Uh, you know, he's, uh, but I can't think of too many more in modern day. You know, I mean, of course, you can go back, and there was, you know, Otis Spann and Doctor John and Professor Longhair, yeah, and, um, and Top Perkins. So there was a long tradition of of uh, singer piano players, but a lot of the blues has just turned to shredding guitar and, you know, um, and, and, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, there are, there are beautiful guitar players out there, you know, um, you know, I, I, I could name a dozen of them that it's just, you know, I just, I just absolutely love. Yeah. But to open it up a little bit more um, to rather than just, you know, the six time around guitar solo, mm -hmm. I, I think, you know, is, is important. You know, there's, uh, um, you know, uh, arguably the guitar is one of, uh, is, you know, one of the most important instruments in blues, but it's not the only instrument. And yeah. it really isn't the only instrument that, that, you know, should be featured in, in this genre, in my opinion, contemporary blues. I mean, you know, I, I, I don't know. We, we've done our own take on the blues. You know, we've we've tried to bring something a little bit different, uh, you know, and uh, again, it was a, a little bit more singer songwriter. Mm -hmm. It was um, uh, still had shredding guitar. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, we're 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 trying to open up um, a little bit of the genre, which it is opening. I mean, you know, uh, it, it really is when when you look at, you know, uh, Joe Bonamassa shows. I mean, oh, my gosh, you know, he's got 15 people on stage. It's it's like an old time blues review. And I love it. In yeah. fact, uh, one of one of his uh, and we actually started with horn players, you know, okay. because I really wanted to, you know, get that vibe of the, you know, old time big blues review. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and, um, but, you know, as things contracted because it's, you know, it's hard to keep a, a 10 piece band together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, working and interested. Right. So. But I mean, you know, and then also backing that up, I mean, it was 90, uh, geez, 98, 99. I saw BB King, uh, uh, perform at, I think it was the Irvine Meadows Amphitheater, and he right. had he had a full lineup of guys. You know, it was, and but there's, you know, there was no doubting that was a blues show. You know, right? Yeah, and 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 yeah, and BB was big on 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 doing that with his shows, which yeah. I think is great, and I and I'm glad that tradition is is like like I said, you know, uh, you know, uh, Joe Bonamassa shows for again, uh, you know, and I'm sure there's a lot more, but. Um, uh, but having that presence of people on stage uh, performing a song is, is, you know, it's epic. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so the, 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 the track that, that, um, that I love the most on this album that I've played uh, over and over again is better man blues. Oh, okay. um, and I just, there's something so wonderfully gritty about the sound of it all. Um, and first off, I'm curious, was that sound in your mind when you wrote it or did it evolve through recording? It actually evolved. I actually wrote it as sort of a Hammond, Jimmy Smith type hmm. intro, almost a, almost a little jazzy. And uh, uh, Dave Darling, our producer, who's uh, just just a phenomenal a talent in in his own right. I mean, he took us and he he turned us inside out. <laughs> and uh, he actually came up with that. He's like, well, you know, I mean, we did it a few times, and yeah, that's you know, that's good. He's like, well, why don't we try this? Yeah. And, and and yeah, he 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 really turned it inside out and and really put, uh, um, you know, uh, the gritty emotion into it, mm -hmm. which was great. Yeah. And it's like everything. I mean, like even the drumming sounds gritty and I'm I'm not, like, I don't, it's like you listen and you're like, I don't know how they accomplished it, but somehow it all like, you know, it's not just like some guy going through an effects box. It's like the whole band has this same vibe. And, you know, I, I'm like, how do you, how do you accomplish that? You know, and if you don't want to give away any of the tricks, I get it, but you know, how, how does one accomplish that? He, you know, again, uh, a great producer is how you mm. accomplish that. So he's like, hey, you know, let's dumb this down a little bit here. And, you know, why don't we go for this vibe on the drums? And he'd do something and then J.R. Lozano would, would would do it back. And, and so he, in, in very short form, was able to just sort of tweak the knobs a little bit on what was going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. And so, and we cut it that way. And yeah, it's you know, it, it you know, it, it does have a grittiness to it. It's got you know, I you know, for lack of a better word, maybe a little bit of a black keys vibe to it, or you know, uh, you know, but an old, an old, uh, uh, you know, Chess Records track or something. So. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in this day and age, when there's so much overproduced over polished material out there uh at least in in my opinion when you hear a track like this it really grabs you uh um not just because it sounds different but because you know there's a uh a, a wonderful rawness to the the sound the emotion the you know it's like you were talking about with you know, you can't fake it with with blues because fans will see it a mile away, you know, and it's just like, oh, there's there's a genuineness to this. Yeah, well, thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that shows through. And what's also fascinating about that is um, the guitar work on that one. It's it's kind of busy or busier than normal in a way, but it doesn't get in the way. Like there's there's times when he's kind of, you know, uh, doing a slight run up the neck while you're singing, which is normally, you know, normally it's like, okay, person's singing, guitar steps back, vocalist takes a beat, guitar steps forward. 
here it was like overlap, but it still sounded good. It still sounded interesting. And was that something he created on his own? Was that your suggestion? How did that come about? That's that's come about from Chalo and I working together because, um, you know, from the from the standpoint of, you know, you, you you take you know any of the old great guitar players, they sang, and they they would call and return themselves on the guitar, mm. and so it was you know very easy for them to say a line and then and then answer it on guitar, and so. Um, but when you're not the singer and you're the guitar player yeah. and sort of reinventing that and saying, well, what can I do rather than just call and, you know, Lauren sings a line and, or, and I, I play a line, you know? Um, and so that sort of or, organically has grown in between, uh, you know, uh, uh, mine and Chalo's uh, uh, interplay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, you know, he's he's found places to to complement the vocal rather than just waiting for the vocal to be done and then saying what he has to say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't think I picked it out the first time, but like as you go through it again, you know, it's like the first time you just get the high level view big picture and then you right. go through it again. And you're like, oh, there's a lot more going on here than I I really first noticed, um, which speaks to a the subtlety of it in that it's not you know you still hear the song as a whole in the beginning but it's 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 always fun when you can listen again and and pick out something new again and again and again and again right yeah yeah and and it, you know he does he does a lot of counterpoint you know in in what's going on and again not just in the logical holes you know it's, yeah. it's he's 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 always pushing the song you know in 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 some way or another and a lot of times you know when we getting back to you know playing live and whatever else listening to those subtleties of where he's pushing it to it's like oh okay you know or yeah now now let's get really angry at yeah you know? <laughs> some screaming hammond in there and right right and, uh, so that's it's a lot of fun and then you know obviously uh um it's a difficult thing to to you know for you to of, kind of put this on the back burner for so long what i'm wondering though is were there any advantages to that in that were you able to do things with this album with these songs that maybe you wouldn't have been able to do had you recorded them 25 years ago absolutely absolutely i mean you know time experience patience um you know all the all that plays into it you know, and so, yeah, you know, I, I I have a lot of songs. I I I have a voice and 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 some things to say, and to get past the first hurdle to release this as has just been you know a, a journey. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, but yeah, I mean, twenty five years ago, I would have been. I I I don't know if I would have. Uh, had what it took hmm. you know in, in a lot of ways I, I i think i needed to go on my journey i think i needed to to um you know to stay in music and 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 be on the sidelines for for you know as long as it took as hmm. long as it took for me to uh you know get where i needed to go so hmm so okay you know that's that is interesting and so you see it not just as like okay i, I needed to sacrifice because i needed to make a living for my family and all that kind of stuff but it was actually a good thing in some ways then i'd say so yes you know yeah. i mean you know you know uh i i'm not a very patient man and it's taught me to be a patient man it's okay it's taught me to be to persevere it's taught me to to um uh you know to not give up hmm. you know, no matter what yeah you know? no so. that's, yeah that's interesting I and mean, especially because so much of music music in the industry is painted as a young person's game and you know it's it's you know um and it's been that way since time and more in memoriam but uh right. 
and yet, you know, I don't know. That's one thing that irks me now is there's there's artists that are not new <laughs> who have been around for a long time who were but who are releasing new material that's fantastic and I would argue is some of their best stuff. But it, oh, yeah. and it doesn't get the attention because they're not the young, you know, new things out there anymore. Yeah, the new shiny thing out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, I I get it, and and yeah, you know, to be on on this end, but you know, uh, all these years later, and remembering back then, and yeah, I would, you know, I very much was into what I was into, mm -hmm. uh, you know, back then, and um, and yeah, it, it you know, it was uh, musically the center of the universe, whereas all this other stuff was happening. And, you know, that's what the 25 years has given me. It's given me 25 years to go through all the music that I missed, mm -hmm. all all the bands that I never had that, you know, weren't on my radar. Yeah. That, you know, that either are still around and, and, and playing, I mean, or or, um, you know, put a great body of work together that just really was not, uh, you know, necessarily on my radar because. I was listening to, you know, pop stations or. or yeah. Yeah. Or... I get that. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Well, that covers all my material. Is there anything we didn't talk about that you want to discuss? Oh, geez. Um, uh, no, I mean, I, I think we've, we've, we've sort of touched on, you know, the, why it took 25 years and uh you know i'm happy i'm still here and i'm happy it did take 25 years mm -hmm. uh, you know and uh you know i've got a great band uh we're uh, the the ep's doing well you know thanks to you know frank rozak promotions and uh, larry k from night train and you know uh, a lot of people have gotten behind it and and uh you know we're very happy about that we're we have uh, our first big blues festival coming up in April this year, the the Murrieta Jazz and Blues Festival uh, on April 20th, where we'll be opening for, you know, Eric Gales and one of my heroes, John Cleary and, wow. and uh, uh, Kenny Wayne Shepherd. Wow. So, you know, we, we, we got our we got our name on the first big bill. Nice. And, uh, you know, looking forward to uh, doing a lot more and doing, you know, and, and working hard. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. Well, I think this has been great. And so, uh, you know, hopefully I'll, uh, with the holidays that kind of throws things off, but hopefully in a couple of weeks I'll have this out and, but I'll, I'll let you know, know when I do post it and, uh, and I'll tag you guys everywhere I do and, and stuff. And, uh, I don't know. That's, that's, that's all there is to it. <laughs> Thank you, brother. And you know what? I do have to give a shout out to our captain. We call him the captain, and that's Chris White on bass. Chris uh, White is, you know, he's he's a, a, another one of the players that's just a joy to play with and mm. and and work together with, and has helped shepherd me to 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 and the band to to where we are now. So awesome. I mentioned everybody else. I couldn't not mention the captain. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And. So. And so many times the bass player does go unmentioned. So it's nice of you to do that. Right on. 